Hi everyone! This is my sixth video in the Disappearing Block series. This quilt is called Buttons and Bows and it's a disappearing pinwheel. It's made of 30 blocks and is 45 by 54 inches and uses one and three quarters yards of each color. Now before I show you how to make this block, I would like to invite you to stay to the very end where I will show you the three color version of this quilt. I will ask your suggestions for a new block name. And finally, I will announce the winners of last month's giveaway. So here's how easy it is to make this quilt. The whole quilt is going to require 120 of these five and a half by five and a half half square triangles. Now each block only requires four of them. And we're going to turn them into pinwheels. And my favorite way to make pinwheels is to line them up so they make kind of this tent shape, dark on the left, light on the right. I sew them all down, pairs, like that. And then once they're sewn together, it's really easy. We take it, we rotate half of them to the top, and then we have a beautiful pinwheel. The advantage is that all of the pinwheels end up going the same direction. Now, once it's sewn together, you should have a pinwheel that measures 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Yep, there we go. And we're going to cut this into equal thirds. So we're going to cut one and three quarters inches from that center seam. And as you see, I already have a piece of tape lined up here to make sure that I'm always cutting on the right line of the ruler. Now, when you cut these, notice that these come out into perfect half square triangles. Rotate your mat 180 degrees. Cut it. If it's not a half square triangle, if you end up with a white corner or a dark corner, it means that you're not measuring these up accurately. So that's just a little trick to kind of make sure, I call it like a reality check, make sure things are lined up the way they ought to be. Now, we're going to rearrange these. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to start with these two corners. We're going to take the upper left corner and rotate it so that the dark is to the upper left. Take the bottom right and rotate it again so the dark is to the outside. So here the See the two darks are to the outside? Now we're going to take the next two corners. We're going to rotate this 180 degrees so that now the dark is down. And notice these two triangles are facing the same way. Now we're going to take this one and we're going to rotate at 180 degrees also. Now these two are pointed the same way. We're going to leave north and south alone. We're going to take east and west and we're going to rotate them 180 degrees. So you can see that now the dark is touching the dark of that half square triangle. We rotate this one 180 degrees. And again, the dark is touching the dark. And you'll have a lot of these little triangles left over. Now, once it's sewn together, you end up with a block that looks like this. Now, let's go put it on the design wall. Now that all the blocks are sewn, I'm going to show you how easy it is to put these together. Now we're going to take four of these blocks and we're going to make a motif. And the center of the motif is going to be this part of the block, this corner that has the triangle with the bar next to it. And when we put four of these together, this motif, this pinwheel with the border, looks a little bit like a bow. So I'm going to call this the bow motif. Now, if we take four of these motifs and put them together, we can start to see the secondary pattern developing. Now, these triangles had been in the corners, but now when we put them together, four of them, they form these little diamonds, which I think look a little bit like buttons. So, we have buttons and bows. And a shout out to Aligny Country Quilters for coming up with this great name. And now that they're together, the only thing we have to do is sew them. And here it is. I love how the original pinwheel centers end up making these cute little bow tie designs in the corners. Now, before I show you the three color variation and how to make it, please thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell. It only takes a second and it really means so much to me. Ta-da! 
the three color version in beautiful red, white, and blue. I was torn as to which one I liked best to make it the main video. So let me know which one you like better. And for those who like this version the best, let me quickly show you how it's made. Not surprisingly, a three color quilt starts with a three color pinwheel. So we have red, blue, and the white background. Now the difference between a normal three color pinwheel is that instead of having the colors opposite each other, they're on the same row. So you see red is on one row, blue is on the other row. And it gets cut up just like the other one would normally get cut up, one and three quarters inches from the center. And the way we rearrange it is very similar. It's just an extra step. These get turned clockwise 90 degrees so that the dark is pointed out. These get turned 180 degrees. You see this is down. These two are the same now. This is 180 degrees. These two are the same. The top doesn't get touched. The top and bottom don't get touched. Right and left, east and west, if you will. They get traded. So this one gets pulled over here. So you see the blue touches the blue. And this one gets traded over here so that the red touches the red. And when it all gets sewn together, it looks like this. So now we have the three color blocks made. And they're going to go together very similar to the way we did the other ones. We're going to make a motif. But in this case, the center of the motif is going to be the red bow. So we put four of these together. And you see we get this lovely red bow. And then, as we continue building out, what you'll notice here is that the button starts to turn out to be this two color button. It's red and blue. And here at the bottom, we end up making the blue bow. So we have red bows, blue bows, and red and blue buttons. Now here's where I need your assistance. This is the block I'm going to cut up for next month's video. Problem is, I can't find anywhere if this block already has a name. And if it doesn't, I need your help coming up with one. I know it looks kind of like a flying geese design, but uh, not really. The name needs to be short enough so that I can say, here is a disappearing something. The couple of suggestions that I have so far are Disappearing Tree and Disappearing Pyramid. If you like this, let me know. But if you have a better idea, please put it in the uh, comments. If I pick it, next month you'll get a shout out. Plus, I've got a whole bunch of designs using these blocks. And if they catch on, you could end up being kind of famous as everyone will be making quilts out of the block that you named. Finally, I want to thank everyone who left a comment in last month's video. I hear you loud and clear. Keep making these disappearing tutorials. Will do. And it really warms my heart to hear how much you like them. And now for the winners of last month's giveaway. Third prize, Elizabeth Boger. Second prize, Kathy Kamala. And first prize, Cindy Benoit. Congratulations. Please send me an email at Brita, that's B as in boy, R-I-T-A, at questioningquilter.com. Thanks to all of you for watching. Stay well and happy quilting.